let's look at uh, this problem of a function of one random variable. So y equal to gx, uh, this is the function that's given to us. This function is given and generally the density function of x is also given and the problem is uh, finding the density function of uh, y. We want uh, f y y. This is the classic problem. <coughs> so one way to conceptualize this is uh, at least in electrical engineering you have some signal going in through some system, let's say a receiver and the output is y, a g of x. So knowing the input density function f x x, uh, we want to find the output density function f y y. Uh, so if the function is smooth and continuous like this, uh, there is a shortcut to do this. So let's say you pick up some particular value of y. So this is y and I make a small increment. Uh, so this is y plus delta y. So this is y plus delta y. So as you can see, the random variable, <coughs> when it takes the value between so we can start by computing this probability, probability that the random variable is between y and y plus delta y. As we know, this is the <coughs> area under the density function of y. Of course, y is unknown. So this is, let's say, this is what we are trying to find out. But <coughs> if delta y is very small, we can approximate this as f y y multiplied by delta y. That's the uh, classic uh, in integration. But on the other hand, as y takes the values between y and we can, uh, y plus delta y, we can translate that into x because when y, since y equal to gx, in this particular case, it has got multiple solutions. I'm going to mark here by x1, x2, x3. And similarly for <coughs> when y is y plus delta y, you have the corresponding solutions x plus delta x1 and uh, x plus x2 plus delta x2. Notice that in this case x1, <coughs> delta x1 is positive, delta x2 is negative. And similarly x3 plus delta x3. Or, delta x3 also positive and delta x2 is negative and delta, just an observation, delta x1 is positive. So you could say that the probability, when y takes the values between y and y plus delta y, x is either here or here or here and these regions are mutually exclusive. So this probability we could also <coughs> write down as the probability that x is between xi and between xi plus delta xi. But these regions are mutually exclusive, so it's the sum of the probabilities of x between xi and xi plus delta xi. <coughs> but on the other hand, that again using the same approximation, we can write this as uh, fx xi multiplied by delta xi. But this delta xi, depending on whether it is a positive or negative, you could do the, uh, the integration limits will be either from xi to xi plus delta xi or the other way. <coughs> but that, that again by approximation so uh, comes up. So we can concentrate on this piece. So that gives us that fyy is summation <coughs> delta xi over delta y fx of xi. Summation is on multiple the roots. And uh, to make this approximation more and more accurate, we make delta y tend to zero, then delta xi is goes to zero, and this becomes the ratio of dx by dy, or, or classic way this is written is one over dy by dx. <coughs> evaluated at x equal to xi multiplied by fx xi. So, <coughs> so you can see there are the, if you want to apply this formula, the quick steps are you fix y and solve the equation <coughs> y equal to gxi. So you, you tabulate the roots x1, x2, etc. 
then compute dy by dx and evaluate it at these roots x equal to xi. And the third step is <coughs> simply substitute into this formula. Fyy is uh, summation over all the roots where the density, of course, the summation only matters where at those roots where the density function is non-negative. Because if, a, <coughs> if the density function is zero here, that th those particular roots have no contribution. So let's just do a quick example. Let's say y equal to x squared. So here, <coughs> if you fix y, uh, there are two roots uh, to this equation. x1 is uh, square root of y, x2 is minus square root of y. And uh, dy by dx is uh, 2x which evaluate the roots, at these roots it is 2 square root of y. So that's at step number 2. So we can quickly write this as <coughs> fyy. The formula, there are two roots, 1 over dy by dx, fx evaluated at the first root, which is uh, plus the fx evaluated at the second root. Of course, from this problem, y is always non-negative because y is x squared. And so the, this is the complete answer, x equals other zero otherwise. So in particular, if x is normal random variable with uh, <coughs> parameters, let's say, 0 and 1, and then fxx is, of course, uh, 1 over square root of 2 by e raised to minus x squared by 2. And fyy y is, uh, uh, so these two terms are the same, so two cancels. So if you substitute, we would get this to be 2 pi y e raised to minus y over 2. And this is chi squared with one degree of freedom. To do a little uh, more uh, involved problem, let's look at, uh, <coughs> suppose x is Cauchy. In other words, fxx is given to be a over pi x squared plus a squared. So x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. And let's say y or theta in this case is tan inverse x. So let's look at uh, this example. So it's easier uh, to deal. <coughs> so we want, of course, the density function of uh, theta. That's what we have. So here you can equally write this as uh, x is uh, tan theta. And as you know, those graphs go like this. And so this is uh, x or tan theta. etc. <coughs> so notice for tan inverse uh, theta, the principal values are from minus pi by 2 to pi, right? This is the, so minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. The rest is uh, repetition, so that's the principal region of uh, <coughs> transformation. And in this case, uh, d, uh, we want d theta by dx, but here d, dx by d theta is easy. That's c squared theta. And so the solution is right here. For a fixed theta, the principal value is given by x1. So this is your x1. x1 is 10 theta. So if you want to evaluate this, <coughs> uh, so d theta by dx, of course, is uh, uh, six, uh, 1 over 6 squared theta, so that's cos squared theta. It's already in, in terms of theta, uh, so we could uh, use the formula here. So formula is going to be 1 over uh, d theta by dx multiplied by the density function evaluated at x1. So if I substitute everything, this is a over pi. <coughs> 
d theta by dx is cos squared theta and instead of x1, so I'm going to substitute tan theta uh, plus a squared. So tan squared is sin squared over cos squared. Uh, so if I <coughs> if I pull it through, this would be uh, sin squared uh, sin squared theta uh, plus a squared cos squared theta uh, theta from minus pi to <coughs> the principal value be being between minus pi by two to pi by two. So this is the answer. There's a special case, interesting case is when a equal to one. Remember, this is Cauchy density function. So the Cauchy is, looks like this. This is uh, fxx. So if a equal to one, notice that <coughs> this becomes sine squared plus cos squared. That's one. And a is uh, one. So this is uh, f theta theta becomes one over pi, which is uniform for theta <coughs> greater than minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Uh, so this is a standard result. Uh, so the standard result is, an, uh, if x is Cauchy, then tan inverse uh, x is, uh, which is theta, is uniform. The only thing I want to emphasize is this is only for the special case when a equal to 1. If the Cauchy parameter is anything other than a, the density function is going to be messy and it will involve uh, theta. <coughs>